Hi and welcome to 4-H Camp. My name is Jenny and I'm the Family and Consumer Sciences Agent at the University of Florida IFAS Extension here in Santa Rosa County. And I am really glad to see you, or not see you because it's a video, but I'm really, really glad you're here. So we are excited to be a part of this 4-H Camp about bees and honey. And because I'm with Family and Consumer Sciences, our focus is all of the things that affect the family or consumers. And by the way, if you buy anything, you're a consumer, whether it's a video game or a snack or anything else you might buy. So our programs are targeted to help you and bring you the best of the best of the best research information that's out there about whatever it is that interests you. So hoping to interest you today, we're gonna actually talk about three different things. We're gonna have a little food demonstration with a recipe that is absolutely delicious. In fact, we call it, honey, I shrunk the carrots. Just kidding, we don't really, but it's a lot of fun to think that way. Anyway, it's a recipe that involves honey to go with the theme of our camp, and it is so good. I think you're gonna enjoy it if you try to make it at home. Our segment after that is gonna be all about local honey and allergies, and what's the research out there about whether it works or whether it doesn't. Hang on for that and we'll cover it pretty shortly. And finally, we're gonna have a fun self-defense class that we call Sting Like a Bee and Master Hope will be teaching you that. So you can get up and get active and learn a little bit about taking care of yourself in a maybe dangerous situation. So without any further ado, let me tell you a little bit about our next speaker who's gonna do our food demonstration. Her name is Miss Gail, and she was one of our nutrition educators here with the Family Nutrition Program for several years, and she knows her stuff when it comes to cooking. So what she's put together for you today is a little recipe with carrots and honey and olive oil, and that's almost all that's in it. So it's easy to make at home. My only caution to you is this. If you're under about 13 years old, you've got to make sure you get not only your parents' permission, but probably some help from an adult as well, because we're gonna be using some very sharp knives cutting these carrots, and Gail will talk about that a little bit. So get a little bit of help, make this recipe for your family, and you're gonna wow them. I almost guarantee if they like honey, they're gonna love this recipe. So here we come with Gail. I want you to notice that we're using all of the proper precautions because we are right in the middle of the coronavirus epidemic. As soon as I finish talking to you and I start filming, I'm gonna be wearing my mask. Gail, Miss Gail is wearing a mask anytime that she's not actually up in front of you teaching. We're both washing our hands and we're maintaining some distance from each other also. Because even though we're reaching you by video, We've still got people around us here in the office and we have to be very, very careful that they're safe. You guys sit back and enjoy. I think you're really gonna like this carrot recipe. I wish we could let you try it today, but since this is a video, it's kind of hard to do that. So try it at home, taste it, see if you like it, and let me know, I'd love to hear from you. Hey, here comes Gail. Hi everyone. Today I'm going to be putting together a recipe called Honey Roasted Carrots so simple so quick to do and this is a side dish that will pair really well with just about any protein but particularly with pork and beef so let's get started the way we should always get started in the kitchen before we do anything else is wash our hands and we want to do a really good job of that and remember it only takes about 20 seconds to do a good job we're going to wet our hands first Put plenty of soap on them and then start scrubbing. Make sure we get between the fingers, the backs of the hands. We want to get the wrist too because we might be putting our arms on the counter a little bit. And we want to make sure we scrub all around the fingernail area too. That should take at least 10 seconds. It's okay if you go even to 15. And then you want to make sure that you rinse all that off really well. There. Now, it's great if you have paper towels and you can use those to dry your hands and to turn the water off. 
because then you can just throw that paper towel away. Okay, the next thing we need to wash, just like we wash all produce, all fruits and vegetables, unless the package says, this has already been washed and you don't need to wash it again. So I've gotten most of my carrots washed up already just to save time, but I have this one left. And the reason I'm gonna show you how to wash this carrot is it's not as easy as just putting it under the water and hoping everything gets nice and clean. We wanna make sure we actually scrub it. You know, they grow under the ground. So that means they're living in the dirt for months. We wanna make sure we get all that off. And if it looks like it needs it, take a clean cloth and really scrub it, just like you would your dishes. Okay, so that's all the carrots washed up now. Have these done already. Next thing we wanna do is peel them. And we're using these big carrots. I know you've seen those little carrots. We call them baby carrots. We don't want those for this recipe. Those are already peeled before they go into the bag and they get water in them. They don't taste quite as good as these big carrots that still have the peeling on them. So we're gonna use them for this recipe because we like that sweetness that carrots have, that natural sweetness. And that's one of the reasons we're using honey with our recipe is to really make that sweetness come out and be even better. Okay, so I have a knife here. And of course, you only use a knife if your parents say it's okay or they help you with it. But we wanna make sure that it's a sharp knife and that we're really careful about how we use it. Again, don't take any sharp knives and use them for anything unless your parents or grandparents say it's okay. But what I like to do is cut the tips off. I'm just gonna add that to my peelings. And then I'm gonna cut this big fat piece off because the carrot changes flavor as it gets closer to where the leaves were when it was growing the tops. And I'm gonna get rid of that. So I'm gonna do that for all of these carrots. Just cut a little piece off there, cut the end off there. I'm making one batch of honey roasted carrots today. If you have a big family and you're helping put together this dish, maybe you double it up and you do twice as many carrots. That would be great, because then you could feed that many more people. Okay, one last one. And see how I'm angling the knife? See how I'm pushing it away from my hand? I wouldn't want to put that knife going toward my hand. So I want to make sure I stay safe. And there we go. That's our next step. After that, we want to take the carrot and cut it down the middle. Now, this is where it's really important to have a sharp knife. If your knife's not sharp, it's easier to slip off the carrot, especially because the carrot's a really hard vegetable. If this were a really big carrot, after I cut it into those two pieces, I would cut it again and make it four pieces. But this is a nice size one, and I'm just gonna start laying it into the dish that we're gonna cook it in. kind of thick. I don't know if you can see the difference or not. I'm going to cut that one more time. This also helps them cook a little bit faster. If I didn't cut them up, it would take 45 minutes to an hour to roast these carrots. But because I'm cutting them up, I can get it done in about 30 minutes. I like to leave them nice and long too. They look really pretty on the plate. And you know, that's important too, not just how your food tastes, but that it looks good. And it's also a nice surprise for your family when they see what a great job you did at making the food look and taste good. Okay, just a couple more. And remember, you're gonna go really slowly. We don't need to be in any hurry. one and it's kind of big so I'm just going to take my time and cut it up a little bit more. Okay, 
and that part is done. They're beautiful just like that. But sometimes we don't want to eat our vegetables raw. Sometimes we like them to be cooked, have little different flavors added to them. So what we're going to do next is just put a little bit of salt on them. Remember, they're a sweet vegetable and they don't need a lot of salt. But one thing carrots love, love, love is black pepper. Now maybe somebody in your family doesn't like black pepper and you don't want to use it or maybe you want to use extra, but it's a really good flavor when you're doing carrots. Okay, I'm going to drizzle a little bit of olive oil on the carrots. This helps them keep their moisture. It helps them not dry out while they're cooking in the oven. By the way, I've already preheated the oven to 350, and we don't need a lot of olive oil, just enough to coat them and keep them yummy, keep them kind of juicy. If they dry out, they're just not as tasty. Okay, so I have salt, I have pepper, I've drizzled them with olive oil, and now here comes the honey. I have what looks like quite a bit of honey here. This is a quarter cup. And that's what the recipe normally calls for. But as I'm looking at how much is going on here, and I think about how I do it at home, I don't use quite that much. It doesn't hurt to cut it back a little bit. Okay, now I'm not gonna mix them up again this time. I'm just gonna let that honey lay there on the top and it's going to soak through as, as it's cooking. Okay, if you're helping with this dish, make sure you get help opening the oven and stay safe with that because it's 350 degrees now the carrots are going in there and they're just going to cook there for like after about 20 minutes i'm going to take a fork and i'm going to do a little test to see if they've gotten tender now here's where you decide how much you want to cook them i like my cook my carrots to be nice and soft and tender, but some people like them to be a little bit crunchy even after they've cooked. So in about 20 minutes, we'll check them and see how they're doing. Carrots have been in the oven for about 30 minutes. At 20 minutes, I checked them to see if they were tender and I thought, yeah, I would like mine a little bit softer. I think they're gonna be fine now and ready to try. Maybe we can even get somebody to try them with us. Oh, I'd I, love to. Oh, Jenny, <laughs> Jenny will help us yes. try them. Let's see how they look. Okay, make sure you get help with a hot oven. Again, we're opening the door and the oven's still hot, although I've turned it off. Oh, wow, look how good those uh, look. Oh, Jenny, I'm excited. Hey, I bet you've noticed that during this demonstration, I haven't been wearing gloves. I don't wear gloves at home, and I'm not wearing them today for this demonstration, but if I were cooking for uh, extra people, cooking for the public, then I would wanna wear gloves to make sure that I keep everyone safe and don't, don't contaminate their food. Also, not wearing a hairnet, if I'm working in public, cooking in a restaurant, cooking in, um, a place that I'm feeding a lot of other people, then I'm going to wear a hairnet, something to keep hair from getting in the food. There you go, Jenny. Let's see what she thinks. She needs a fork. There you go. I'm going to try one too, although I already know I like them. Mmm, mm. it's really good. Oh. I had these last night with roasted chicken. Delicious. I hope you give this recipe a try. Oh, I want to mention too that carrots, sweet potatoes, pumpkins all get their color from something called beta carotene. And when the human body gets beta carotene to work with, it turns it into vitamin A. And vitamin A, among other things, helps keep our eyes and our skin healthy. So I hope you eat carrots maybe once a week. I know I'll be trying this one. Good. It's great, guys. Try it at home. But get a parent to help, especially if you're under 13. Mm. Oh, yum. Mm-hmm.